All right, welcome again to Seahorse Indoor Soccer Instruction. I uh, can't believe this is our fifth session already. Um, today we're going to talk about futsal. We're going to talk about uh, more about dribbling, and Coach Daniel is going to give you some um, ideas about turning the ball, turning the ball away from a defender in order to go in another direction. So along with that, we've got uh, more from our Fruit of the Spirit talks and uh, another challenge for you. So we hope you enjoy uh, today's session. All right, so another difference between futsal and outdoor soccer is the number of people on the field. In a normal soccer game, there are 11 people on each team on the field at any time. That's 10 field players and one goalkeeper. Um, in futsal, there are only five on the field, four field players and one goalkeeper. Could you imagine if we were playing a game and there were 11 people on each team on this small court? It'd be pretty crowded. You probably wouldn't touch the ball often. So that's what's awesome about futsal. Because we're playing in a small area and there's less people on the field, it gives you more opportunities to get more touches on the ball. Okay, this session we're gonna work on a new dribble move and we're gonna work on turning. So we're gonna work on four different turns. We're gonna work on turning with the inside of our foot, turning with the outside of our foot, doing a pullback and doing a Cruyff turn. So if you have a soccer ball and you have some space, I encourage you to practice these skills at home. So watch as I show you a few of these skills. So first we're gonna start out turning using the outside of our foot. So we're gonna dribble and turn, cutting just with the outside of our foot. Dribble, turn, just with the outside of our foot. Now let's practice with the inside of our foot. I'm gonna dribble and turn just using the inside of our foot. I'm going to dribble, turn, just using the inside of our foot. The next one is a pullback. So we're going to use the bottom of our foot, like we use for the sole dribble, to turn and go in the opposite direction. So if we're dribbling, we're going to do a pullback, turn around, dribble, do a pullback, turn around. Okay, this fourth one is a little bit more challenging. So if you felt pretty good on those first three, I encourage you to give this one a try. This is called a Cruyff turn. So what we're going to do is we are going to act like we are about to shoot the ball or pass the ball by stepping with that plant foot. But instead of actually kicking the ball, we're going to bring our foot around the ball and turn in the opposite direction. So I will show you one more time slowly. I'm going to approach the ball, step, but instead of kicking the ball, we're going to bring our foot around and turn. So let's watch that now a bit quicker. All right, so there are four turns that we're gonna be working on today. I encourage you to find some space, take some time, practice with that soccer ball. Hey, I hope you guys are doing well. I know that um, during this time, you're used to seeing Bill uh, going through the fruits of the spirit, um, but today I get the opportunity to go through some Bible time and talk about that verse and, and just another one of those fruits that we've been talking about. Um, so I know that this week has been kind of disappointing that we have had to cancel the league this spring. We will not be playing in the indoor league. That's something that I was looking forward to. I um, was very excited to be out on the field with all of you guys um, throughout the week and on Saturdays, and that was going to be a really great thing. Um, unfortunately, due to this season of life, we're going to have to postpone that, and we're going to have to wait. Um, sometimes it is really, really challenging to wait for something, especially uh, when it is so good and is something that we are looking forward to. Um, but we're hoping to be back on the field uh, sometime in the near future. But let's go ahead and go through that verse that we've been going over the past couple weeks. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So if you remember the past few weeks, Bill has had an opportunity to talk to you about uh, love, joy, and peace. Um, so today I get the chance to talk to you about patience. Um, patience is one of these fruits of the Spirit that I believe applies to this time in our lives and our time in the world um, so well. Um, so patience is the ability to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting upset or angry. So I'm sure that you've heard plenty of times from either a parent, teacher, um, maybe one of your siblings, that you need to be patient, you need to wait for something. Um, but the idea of having true patience is more than simply just waiting. 
Um, as I talked about, it's about waiting without getting upset or angry. Another definition that I've read is the quality of waiting calmly without complaining. Um, and I think sometimes that can be so, so challenging. Uh, it's been tough sometimes, I think, for myself to not get grumpy during this time when I would much rather be out playing soccer or coaching you guys. Um, but obviously the circumstances don't allow us to do that and we have to wait. Um, so I'm going to share two Bible stories that came to mind um, that talk about patience and, and can teach us a little bit about patience in this season. So I'm going to share a story from the Old Testament that has some wisdom about patience and waiting. Um, so this story is about a guy named Habakkuk. Kind of a funny name. Habakkuk was a prophet, meaning he's someone who was close to God, understood the teachings of God, and would also often tell other people about that. So Habakkuk was um, lived about 650 years before Jesus was even on the earth. So the story of Habakkuk can be found in the book of Habakkuk in the Old Testament. And basically, in this story, it's a conversation between Habakkuk and God. Um, so I'm going to share a few things from this story and about how God talks to Habakkuk about being patient and waiting. So the story starts and Habakkuk is talking to God and he asks God, Lord, I continue to ask for help. How long will you ignore me? He continues and says, people are destroying things and hurting others while I am looking. They are arguing and fighting. So Habakkuk is seeing a lot of evil things that are going on, things that he believes that God should fix. God responds to this and says, I will do something in your lifetime that will amaze you, but you won't believe it when you are told about it. So basically, God is telling Habakkuk that he has a solution for this problem, but he needs to wait. It's not going to happen right away. God continues and he says, it is not yet time for the message to come true, but that time is coming. The message will come true. It may seem like a long time before it happens, but be patient and wait for it. These things will happen. They will not delay. And I think that is such a good reminder to us, especially in this time, when we know that we can look forward to a time where we can be out playing soccer again, we can see family, friends, be back at school. But right now, we just have to wait. We have to wait and trust that God has a plan. To be a successful soccer player, I also think patience is so important and something that when you learn to be patient can help you be so much more successful as an athlete. So I thought of a few ways that as a soccer player, you can use patience to become better. So the first one is when learning a new skill. We've been doing skills throughout this video segment, and some of them might be tough. The first time you try, you may not be able to get it right. But if you give yourself some time and be patient while learning those skills, in the long run, it'll pay off. Another time you might want to be patient is when your team isn't being successful. If you aren't winning games, that can be really, really frustrating. It could be easy to um, begin complaining or be grumpy about that. Um, but if you're patient, then you can work together as a team and hopefully down the road, you'll be able to get a win. With playing time, sometimes a coach makes a decision where maybe you might not be playing. You can be patient, wait your turn, and allow other people to play. And another one is an injury. Sometimes, because we're playing a sport, you can get hurt. And sitting out is the only way for your body to heal. I can speak about this from experience. Seven months ago, I hurt my back, and I haven't been able to be active for seven months. Um, and I've had to be very, very patient because if I went back to doing the same activity that I was doing before, I would re-injure my back. So as you know, during this time, it has been tough because we have not been able to do everything that we want to do. We're not able to be out on the soccer field playing soccer. We're not allowed, or we're not able to spend time with family and friends that we would like to be doing. And with so many things that we are not able to do, you might ask, what, what can we do? What can we do in being patient and waiting? Because that can be so tough. And I asked myself this question earlier this week, and I came to a verse in the book of Romans that I really, really liked and I want to share with you today. Romans 12, 12 says, be joyful because you have hope. Be patient when trouble comes and pray at all times. So this verse says that we can be joyful because we have hope. Just like in the story of Habakkuk and God, God let him know that he has a solution to the problems, but he just had to wait. He had to wait some time and he had to be patient. It says, be patient when troubles come. 
This is probably a troubling time, whether it's because you are stressed about not being able to be at school or get your schoolwork done, or maybe it's really, really tough not being able to have your teacher there helping, helping you with your homework. Or maybe it's a troubled time because your favorite thing in the world is soccer and you are not able to do that. But we can be patient, but because we have hope. And then the third thing, it says pray at all times. This is an opportunity where we can pray and ask God and have conversations with God about what he might do with this time in our lives. This is a unique time where we don't have as many things that um, take up our schedule. We don't have sports. We don't have school. But we do have times where we can be with our families and have conversations with them that maybe we wouldn't have otherwise. Um, we have opportunities where we can sit down and maybe give a phone call to somebody who we haven't been able to talk to in a long time. So I encourage you during this time, be creative and be patient with, with this extra time that we've been given. Um, I encourage you maybe spend some time praying. Now that we've been learning the fruits of the Spirit, be praying for ways that God can show those fruits in your life. Um, I've enjoyed seeing the results of the challenges that you guys have put in. I encourage you to continue doing that. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to help you with any soccer skills or answer any questions you might have. All right, now here's the challenge for the day. Today's challenge, we're gonna be working on dribbling and turning. So I've set up two cones that are five steps away, and I want you to set a timer for 30 seconds and see how many times you can go back and forth in 30 seconds. So watch, I'm gonna use the pullback, but you can turn with inside your foot, outside your foot, or if you wanna do the Cruyff turn, you're welcome to do that. All right, so each line that you cross is gonna be worth one point. So I wanna see how many you can get in 30 seconds. Watch. So there I did four. Let me know how many you can get.